thank you very much um, and thank you to the organizers for this opportunity to uh, pretend my talk present my talk here today so okay that's fine excellent thank you um, so right, um, so the uh, talk is on uh, a small clinical trial with, it, with an H tag inhibitor called Romadepsin. And just to put uh, this study into context, then um, uh, several years ago, the kick and kill approach or the shock and kill approach uh, was proposed as a uh, potential way to cure HIV infection. So the idea here is to, in a patient who is uh, well suppressed on heart, to activate the latently infected cells um, using a, a activating or reactivating agent and then to have uh, expression and release of viral particles uh, which would enable the immune system to kill these latently uh, infected cells, at least uh, potentially. So h inhibitors have been the most well-investigated group of compounds in this context. Uh, they are well known uh, to induce HIV RNA, mRNA uh, transcription in latently infected resting CD4 uh, T cells in vivo as well as ex vivo. It's also been shown by several groups that uh, the potency in, in doing this, in reversing or turning on transcription, is, is quite variable from one h tag inhibitor to another. Ultimately, what h tag inhibitors and other uh, agents that are designed to uh, revert uh, latency are supposed to do is they need to induce the release of viral particles or at least the emergence of viral particles on the surface of the latently infected cells because otherwise um, it's uncertain whether the immune system will be able to recognize the cells and mediate the killing. So Romadepsin is uh, an h tag, h -tag inhibitor license uh, for treatment of uh, peripheral and cutaneous T-cell lymphomas in the US. It has been shown to increase extracellular RNA release from memory and resting CD4 T-cells in patients on uh, heart uh, ex vivo. Uh, the EC50 for Romadepsin is approximately uh, 4.5 nanomolars uh, compared with uh, almost 4,000 nanomolars for Saha in a primary T-cell model. The half-life of uh, Romadepsin, which is uh, given as an infusion, is uh, about four hours in uh, plasma. However, uh, recently it was uh, questioned whether Romadepsin or any other h inhibitor was potent enough to uh, induce um, the release of, of virus, at least in a viral outgrowth assay. They all came up as negative in this assay. So we undertook a small clinical trial. Um, we used Romadepsin in a dosing of 5 mg per square meter, that is about uh, one third of the dosing used in cancer patients. We gave three doses all together, one at day 0, one at day 7 and one at uh, day 14. The primary endpoints in the study was uh, safety as well as the activation of HIV from latency as determined by plasma HIV RNA and cell-associated unspliced HIV RNA in total C4 T cells. Secondary endpoints include histone isolation, uh, HIV DNA, and T cell activation, and some of the inclusion and exclusion criteria are listed uh, below. Um, here are some just brief basic uh, patient characteristics. So we included five males and one female, they're all Caucasians. Uh, the median uh, CD4 uh, T cell count at inclusion was uh, 760. The median age was 54. Um, the median duration of uh, antiretroviral treatment was nine and a half years. Uh, none of these patients had started uh, antiretroviral treatment during acute uh, HIV infection. We didn't have any restrictions regarding what uh, antiretroviral regimens the patients could be on to be included. So here are the first results uh, regarding safety. So this is uh, self-reported adverse events. Um, altogether, we recorded 40 adverse events during the uh, three infusions in the six patients. Um, most of these adverse events uh, were mild, grade one, and resolved spontaneously within a few days. Two adverse event events were uh, grade two. They all occurred in uh, the same individual after the second infusion, and it was uh, fatigue and fever in, in this individual. It also resolved spontaneously within uh, two to three days. The numbers of uh, adverse events reported by each participant ranged from one in one individual to 13 in another individual. 
as is well known with uh, romdepsin, the most common side effects were abdominal symptoms as well as uh, fatigue. Um, a feature about uh, H. diagnosis is that many of them induce um, disturbances in the white blood cell compartment. So uh, we monitored uh, CD8 uh, cells, CD4 cells, uh, leukocytes, neutrophils, and thrombocytes in these patients. And what you can see collectively is that uh, there is an initial decline within first two, uh, within first 10 days in all these four or five parameters. However, this reverts more or less to baseline uh, seven days following the last infusion. So histone uh, H3 acetylation is a direct uh, pharmacodynamic measure of the effect of romadepsin in uh, T lymphocytes. Um, I have indicated the dosing of romadepsin with the blue arrows. As you can see, there is a very uh, quick uh, increase in uh, the level of ac acetylation in uh, in the mean of, of these six patients. Um, we have a measurement time, uh, time point after each uh, uh, infusion, which is taking about a, a half an hour to one hour after the infusion. And as you can see, with all three dosings, there are significant increases at this time point. You can also see a very nice uh, cyclic uh, picture, uh, uh, which corresponds nicely with the time of the infusions. Then we went on to measure uh, cell-associated HIV RNA, which is a measure of HIV transcription um, within uh, the T cells, uh, the CD4 T cells. Um, at the top uh, graph, you see the individual levels of uh, cell-associated HIV RNA, and in all six patients, we observed uh, significant increases uh, in this uh, parameter. At the bottom, you see the mean uh, cell-associated uh, HIV RNA uh, for these uh, six patients, and uh, you can see the most pronounced uh, increases in, in uh, cell social uh, HIV RNA were after the second and the third dosing. Again, you see a, a nice cyclic uh, pattern. So the big question was, could we actually uh, induce or uh, the release of our particles into the blood of these patients? So we went on and measured uh, plasma HIV RNA. We used two different uh, assays. These are both standard assays. One is the covert tagman assay, which is commonly used all over the world to monitor uh, HIV RNA in patients. Uh, the other one is, uh, is a TMA assay, a transcription-mediated assay, which is used by my, many blood banks to detect uh, HIV in uh, donor blood. So after the first cycle, uh, three of the six patients had uh, increases in uh, plasma HIV RNA as determined by the covid tagman assay. All six patients were uh, below the limit of detection prior to uh, their first infusion, and three of them became uh, quantifiable with levels up to uh, 32 uh, copies per milliliter uh, three days post-infusion. Then we gave the second infusion and we saw even more pronounced increases in HIV RNA. Um, five of the six patients reach, reached uh, quantifiable levels of HIV RNA. Uh, one patient peaked at uh, 103 copies per milliliter uh, three, uh, three days after the second infusion. As you can see, all come down, uh, both after the first infusion and after the second infusion towards uh, uh, below the limit of quantification. So, of course, we were curious what would happen after the third infusion, and somewhat to our surprise, we did see increases, but not as pronounced as after uh, the second infusion. Um, two of the patients became uh, quantifiable again, uh, and uh, the same patient that had 103 copies after the second infusion had 119 copies after the third infusion. And as you can see again, uh, seven days after third infusion, all patients are below the limit of quantification. Uh, next, we went on to measure TMA. So this is just a crude measure, so you get a yes or no answer if there's HIV RNA in the plasma of these patients. Um, in the uh, circles, uh, positive is uh, red and uh, negative is uh, uh, blue. 50% uh, of SEMs were positive at baseline. This increased uh, three days after the first infusion to uh, about 85%. And after the second third infusion, we saw up to 100% of samples being positive from these uh, patients. Just a little bit of uh, immunology. Um, we did a study uh, if 
uh, romdepsin had any impact on the distribution of um, the various subsets uh, in uh, CD4 uh, T cells and in CD8 T cells. And what we saw in both uh, CD4 and CD8 cells was a shift towards a larger proportion of uh, naive cells and a small proportion of uh, effector uh, memory cells and central memory cells in um, both compartments. As you can see, this happened fairly quick. Uh, it was detectable one day after the infusion but had actually reverted back to baseline after 10 days. Next, we went on to measure uh, CD69 uh, as a measure of uh, CD4 T cell activation. And uh, what we found was that in the effector, in, in the uh, terminally differentiated uh, memory compartment, we saw a significant increase, almost a doubling, in uh, the proportion of activated cells. Uh, again, this had uh, almost reverted back to normal uh, within uh, 10 days of the first infusion. This actually um, has also been uh, produced in ex vivo. Uh, data. Um, finally, we measured uh, PD-1 on uh, CD4 and CD8 T cells, and what we found was a decrease in PD-1 expression in both uh, CD4 and uh, CD8 uh, cells, um, and it persisted in CD4 cells 10 days after the first infusion. Finally, we went on to measure total HIV DNA as a marker or uh, a surrogate marker of the size of uh, the latent reservoir. Um, to the, your left is shown the individual levels um, during the uh, 21 days. And to your uh, right uh, are shown the fold changes from baseline. As you can see, on a group level, there was no significant change in the size of the reservoir in these six patients. There was one patient, the magenta cold line, who had a, an 80% uh, decrease in HIV DNA, but no uh, group effect. So to conclude, romodepsin safely activated latently infected cells and induced transient uh, quantifiable viremia to um, a level which has not uh, been observed previously in, in these types of studies. Um, the, uh, there were some uh, phenotypic uh, changes uh, which occurred in T cell compartment during romdepsin uh, treatment. This needs to be investigated further to, um, to try to elucidate if, if this has an impact both on the reservoir size but also um, on the ability of the immune system to clear uh, reactivate cells. Um, in this study, in six patients, the reservoir was not significantly reduced as measured by HIV DNA. Um, and we just uh, started uh, very recently a trial combining a therapeutic vaccine with uh, bromodepsin. So I have a lot of people to thank, um, especially my colleagues at the Department of Infections uh, Diseases in Aarhus, uh, in particular Martin, Thomas, uh, Lars, uh, Stefan Mette, um, Ricky and Sophie has uh, made a, an enormous contribution to this uh, study and uh, the sponsors at, at uh, BioNorpharma as well. So I'll end my talk here and take any questions.